Every 52 minutes, someone dies from an eating disorder. It's a staggering fact, and yet most people don't realize just how widespread this problem is. In the US alone, nearly 30 million Americans will struggle with an eating disorder. I honestly had no idea how pervasive this issue was until my best friend nearly lost her life to anorexia. That experience opened my eyes to just how broken access to care is. People are slipping through the cracks, and those who need help the most aren't getting it. In the next few minutes, I hope to share with you what I'm working on to address this healthcare need, how the Stanford CSI resources have catalyzed my ability to do so, and what I hope for you to take away from this talk. My goal is to close the gap in eating disorder recovery care by creating a product with three key elements. Kahani is a gamified, personalized, and collaborative solution for continuous care. We know that recovery is not linear, so Kahani meets you where you are in your recovery journey and adapts with you. Our evidence-based approach is validated by Stanford professors and eating disorder specialists, and we have commitment from the National Eating Disorder Association and the Eating Disorder Resource Center to help us test and share our product with the greater community. In order to get here, I'm incredibly grateful to share with you some of the best parts of the Stanford CSI experience and ecosystem. These resources helped inspire me to reconnect with my deepest passions and catapulted the development of this company. To give you a flavor of what some of these resources look like, this summer I spent my time participating in the Impact Design Immersion Fellowship, an eight-week program funded by the CSI to help us ideate, execute, and prototype our ideas. This is where Kahani was born. I was also a part of the healthcare deal team as a part of the Impact Fund, which is a student-run evergreen fund that invests in early stage for-profit ventures with a social and environmental lens. I also got to lead the Healthcare Club Conference and had the unique opportunity to be able to interview people like Tyler Schultz, who was the Theranos whistleblower. These two experiences exposed me to the budding world of entrepreneurs and helped highlight the importance of how we can keep equity at the forefront of the conversation in the ever-evolving healthcare AI landscape. I participated in a two-quarter biodesign immersion course, which helped me with my entrepreneurial skills and heavily relied on the Venture Studio resources. Next quarter, I'm incredibly excited to take Product Market Fit with Andy Radcliffe, founder of Wealthfront and Benchmark, and I have to give a shout out to Product Launch, which is a phenomenal course taught by Russ Siegelman. By now you know how much I care about eating disorders. It's a pervasive issue, and while I nearly lost my friend, I'm so grateful to see her on a path to recovery. But by now you also know what a silent killer this condition is. In fact, half of you in this room will know someone struggling with this pain. So my ask is to break the cycle. Your voice can be powerful in helping someone begin their journey to recovery. There's no right way to do it, but the wrong way is by avoiding the issue out of fear. The only wrong action is no action. Your people need to know that you see them and that you will be there with them through the ups and downs of recovery. I have up here a few do's and don'ts, which should provide a basic foundation in how to start that discussion on supporting someone you love. I've helped two of my friends start their recovery journey, and I'm more than willing to have that conversation if it can be helpful for you. Please do reach out to me. I hope you leave this talk feeling motivated to tackle some of the most important healthcare issues. I hope you leave this talk feeling empowered to make a difference in someone's life, right here, right now. Change can start with you. Thank you.